In the vast technologically advanced galaxy of Star Wars, cybernetics are often overlooked, holding a pivotal role in the evolution of both individuals and societies, effortlessly replacing, enhancing, and working together with their organic body donor. Cybernetics seamlessly integrates organic and artificial elements, blurring the lines between man and machine. In other words, a cyborg. In order to become cybernetically enhanced, you would need an operation. And few people across the galaxy operated body modification parlors for business and pleasure. But what kind of modifications do people get? The modifier who worked in the Mos Eisley mod parlor on Tatooine cybernetically enhanced himself, replacing one of his limbs. He was also one of the few people in the galaxy who could perform such an operation as a cyberneticist. His customers were the mod gang, upgraded with limbs and organs. Drash had one of her arms replaced, and Scad had one of his eyes replaced alongside of his left leg. Cyborgs viewed their mods as an upgrade, not as a replacement to their organic limbs and organs. An advancement of cybernetic limbs is that they could be swapped out for tools and weapons. But what do modifications look like when they aren't voluntary? While well, Boba Fett saved Fennec Shan with cybernetic organs from her blaster wounds, and following Echo's capture by the Separatists, Echo was transformed into a cyborg. He was outfitted with cybernetic replacements for his legs, while his right arm, which he had lost, was replaced with a socket arm that allowed him to interface with computer systems, like a droid or USB stick. He was sold off to the Techno Union and further experimented on by Watt Tambor, a cyborg himself for Separatist counterintelligence, and Echo was an experiment that ultimately backfired as it only made him stronger and more capable as a clone, and not as an asset to the enemy. And Echo was more machine than man at this point, proving cybernetics only enhances the organic body. General Grievous was forced to almost have his entire body replaced by cybernetic parts, though he retained his vital organs such as his brain, eyes, heart, and stomach, nearly everything else was cybernetic. The Jedi Hunter was programmed to kill, and he was already a great warrior, but with a complete cybernetic body, cybernetics again proved it enhances the organic body even if it completely consumes it. But what if instead of strength and military weapon modifications, that a cybernetic enhancement was done solely for knowledge? Lobot is a great example of this as he was outfitted with an AJ-6 cyborg construct, a cybernetic device that attached onto the backside of the user's head, designed to increase the user's productivity. As the Cloud City's computer liaison officer, his implants enabled him to communicate with the city's central network to become a true servant of his homeworld of Bespin. Dr. Quadpa also had an AJ-6 construct for medical precision and data, making efficient use of his four limbs. The AJ-6 was also utilized by Imperial officers to streamline tasks such as flight controls and labor droids and oversaw operations in spaceports on planets to ensure everything runs smoothly. Despite the Empire being comprised of mostly humans, as aliens were rarely allowed to serve, the Empire had many cyborgs amongst their ranks. Of course, there is Darth Vader having all of his limbs removed and given a power suit to keep him alive. The genius and surgeon of his power suit was also a cyborg, Dr. Silo, and he was a scientist who believed organics were holding evolution back and cybernetics were the next step in evolution. Gable Karras was an Imperial Admiral who was stationed on Mustafar and he was also a cyborg like Vader. Karras had replaced both his right arm and the left half of his face with a cybernetic voice modulator. Cybernetics were also popular among the fringes of the galaxy. Bounty hunter Cad Bane had a pair of cybernetic tubes connected to his skull to keep him breathing, and Haxian Brood Criminal Syndicate modified each other as signs of loyalty to the Brood. Darth Maul even had a cybernetic spider body to stay alive that he scraped together and he would later swap them for robotic legs. In full body, cyber mods are rare to see, but there are examples. Omar monks were a religious order that believed in isolating themselves from all physical sensation to enhance the power of their minds. Enlightened monks would have their brains transplanted into nutrient-filled jars carried by a small spider droid, and whenever they wanted to move, these bottled brains used the spider-like droid as walkers. In other words, turn your brain into a CPU for a cyber spider. 
We also get to see the Mandalorian creature, who we really don't know what this is, but it's just called the Spider Tank, was a manually controlled droid utilized by a cyborg that resided in the mech. Basically the same thing as a Bomar monk. While Mayfield had cybernetic attachments like a robotic arm for an extra pistol, this was an example of a cyber mod with no damage done to the organic body. It allowed their users to fire a handheld weapon while keeping both their hands free. An automated weapons mounting could be activated via voice commands or sync to their users for activation and automation. The Rebellion also had many fighters that were turned into cyborgs. Saul Guerrera, after years of fighting the Empire, resorted to a power suit to keep him alive, with a cybernetic right leg and an oxygen respirator attached to his pressurized power suit of armor, and he had reinforced lungs. Gunny was also a Mimbanese pilot who lost her arm when she was shot down. And of course, Luke Skywalker had one of his arms replaced, proving that the best characters are Cyborg, and that also includes Palpatine. Another aspect to cybernetics is who manufactures them. Biotech Industries was the company that produced cybernetic technology, producing the AJ6 cyber construct and limb replacements. And of course, these corporations weren't scandal-free, employing risky scientists for the sake of innovation, as most scientists who study cybernetics are a cyborg themselves and often become consumed in their work and experiments. The faults in the AJ6 would often erase their personality and occasionally see their behavior become erratic. They would also control what planets get cybernetic parts, imposing tariffs and taxes, limiting access to who can get cybernetics, which ultimately bred an illegal and dangerous black market. The Techno Union also used their technology for weapons of war and espionage. Admiral Trench is a great example of cybernetics on the wrong person, a military genius ready to rage war. Most of the cybernetics market was still backyard shops with scrap together parts which often resulted in botched surgeries. So what's the takeaway from all this? All of your favorite characters in Star Wars are cyborgs, further proving cybernetics only enhance the organic body. I definitely think we need to see more cybernetics in Star Wars, more bounty hunters, Sith, Jedi, Imperials, Rebels, pilots, soldiers, mechanics, slicers, you name it, cybernetics needs to be expanded. The untapped potential of cybernetic creatures in Star Wars has yet to be seen. Dr. Silo has a pergil that he kind of made as his home base so that way he could travel all across the galaxy, but we don't see very many cybernetically enhanced creatures. So with that, that is cybernetics in Star Wars. Subscribe if you would like, and until next video, goodbye.